Morning, Gary. I'm going to start in just a minute. Well, this is the first in a series of 10 Advent discussions on what the original evangelists who wrote the gospel meant for us to hear. And I wanted to begin with the oldest of the gospels, St. Mark's gospel. And I know that a lot of people who may um, be attending this will start by saying, wait, there is no Christmas story in Mark. But I absolutely believe that Mark tells about the incarnation, even though Mark's gospel contributes nothing to the traditional Christmas pageant where we've put all the gospels together. Mark's entire incarnation declaration can be found in his one first sentence. In Greek it reads, Euangelion Jesu Christu, Wiu Theu, the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We in the 21st century hear those words and because we've celebrated Jesus Christ as Son of God for so many years, we fail to hear what incendiary words those actually were. You see, Jesus was not the only person in his time who claimed the title Son of God. There was another. Augustus Caesar was said to be the Son of God. In that opening sentence, when it was first declared to a first century congregation, there would have been practically that audible intake of breath as people were shocked by what Mark had to say. By claiming Jesus as Son of God, just the same as Caesar claimed to be Son of God, Mark is setting up a dynamic, saying to us, there are two kings. Therefore, there are two kingdoms. In Jesus, we're going to see the kingdom of God. And we're going to see the way to live within that kingdom, the kingdom of love. And in Caesar, we're called to see the domination system the empire of Rome that exercised power by threat and control. A kingdom that said, do as I say, or I can kill you. These two kingdoms are set up side by side, and Mark, throughout his whole gospel, is going to ask us to make a choice. Where do we choose to live our lives where do we choose to put our energy? Will we live by the, the values of the empire that say step on whoever you can in order to get to the top? Or will we live by the values of the kingdom that says love your neighbor as you love yourself? Mark sets up quite a dynamic, but that's not even where Mark ends. Those words that begin his gospel, Euangelion Jesu Christu Viu Theu, were a direct quote from something else. You see, as Augustus crashed across the world in that time, every time he won a major battle, he would send runners out to all the various places in the empire, and the announcement was, Euangelion Augustus Caesar Viu Theu, the good news of Augustus Caesar, the Son of God. And so by taking that one sentence quote and changing it to be the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Mark announces from the very beginning of the gospel that this 
is a story of victory. He tells us from the beginning, you're going to have to make a choice between two kings. You're going to have to make a choice between two kingdoms. But he lets us in from the start on which one it is that's going to win. They were powerful, incendiary words, but they tell us from the start that if we will choose to follow this king, we will be able to live in the kingdom of God even now, even in the midst of the values and the systems of domination that go with empire. For Mark, the incarnation is all about opening up a choice to us to live a radically different life in this world and to make the world around us into more of a place where God could reign as king. Thank you so much for joining me today. I believe two days from now, Wednesday, I will be presenting another, and this one will be called The Five Hidden Women in Matthew's Genealogy. And so perhaps between now and then, you might take the opportunity to read that genealogy that Matthew writes at the beginning of his gospel. Have a blessed day and a holy Advent preparation. <laughs>